Hey guys and welcome to lesson 24. Today we will talk about something that is very crucial in grammar and that is the subject and verb agreement. How we must make the verb agree, uh, the verb agrees with the subject. So uh, after that we will take a look at work and job and difference between both and expressions using both. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to lesson 24. Today we are going to start with a little bit of grammar. Subject verb agreement. Now this is extremely important in English, especially when you are uh, writing. Uh, it is very important. Okay, let's take a look. Subject must always agree with the verb. The subject, uh, that, okay, what does that mean? It means we must always use the correct verb with the correct subject. If the subject is singular, the verb must agree with it. If the subject is plural, the verb must agree with it. Let's take a look. Noun add, okay, uh, add an S to singular form. Okay, so the dog chases the cat. So the dog is the subject, chase is the verb, we must add the singular S. The dog chases the cat. So this is the verb, it agrees with the subject because the subject is singular, the verb must be added an S to because it's a present simple verb. Now, if we have the dogs, plural, then we don't add, chase, we don't add an S to chase. It just becomes the dogs chase the cat. So that is basically what it means for the subject and the verb to be in agreement. Now, let's take a look at nine subject verb agreement rules well let's start with rule number one a phrase or clause between the subject and the verb does not change the number of the subject what does that mean you can say a can of lima beans sits on the shelf a can of lima beans so we have this lima beans is a prepositional sentence uh, phrase is a prepositional phrase because it started with the preposition of a can of lima beans sits on the shelf the verb is still single because the subject is still single so if we separate them the verb will still be will uh, the verb will must will have to agree with the single subject which is a can so we will add an s to it the verb sits agrees with the subject can. Here, can is not a model. A can is, you know, a can of beans, a can of Coke. Can. All right. Rule number two. Indefinite pronouns as subjects. Indefinite pronouns are like each, every, any, no, other, nothing. Those are all called indefinite pronouns. Singular indefinite pronoun subjects take singular verbs okay uh, pay attention each is always singular each is always singular so with each we will use does each does a good deal of work each one is happy each one is because each is singular both is always plural both is always plural so with both we will always use the verb that agrees with the plural form both do a good deal of work not both does both do so these plur these uh, these subject these indefinite pronouns are always singular take a look each other neither one no one nobody nothing anything anybody anything someone somebody something everyone everybody everything these are always singular so everything uh everything oh okay now everyone plays well everyone plays well so the verb will be play plus s because everyone is single so these uh these indefinite pronouns are always single now these indefinite pronouns are always plural several few both and many okay some indefinite pronouns may be singular and plural they may be both like some any none all and most 
they can be used either as singular or the plural. How do we decide if they're singular or, the pl or, or plural? We look at the context. We look at the sentence. Like, for example, some of the sugar is on the floor. So here you have sugar. Oops, this is too big. Hold on one second. Let me just correct this. Okay, here we have sugar. Sugar is an uncountable noun, and because it's uncountable, it always takes a singular form, which is is. Some sugar is on the floor. So it is determined by the context. What are we talking about? Are we talking about something that is single, or are we talking about something that is plural, or are we talking about something that is uncountable? Some of the marbles are on the floor. So marbles are, uh, it's accountable, it is, uh, it is plural, and it is countable. It is, uh, it is uh, plural because it is countable. It cannot be plural and countable because uncountable nouns have only one form, and that is a singular form. So if it's plural, if it's plural that means it's countable. It's a giveaway. So the, some of the marbles are on the floor. Some of the marbles are on the floor. So here the verb is are because it is plural. Because we look at the context, we look at the sentence, and we see that the marbles are plural. Okay, so rule number three uh, with the verb, uh, su subject verb agreement is compound subjects joined by and. So if we have and, you know it's plural because we have one subject and another subject and that makes both subjects a plural. So the verb has to be plural, such as a pencil and an eraser make writing easier. Make, plural, because we, there are two. Now, for the next rule, rule number four, you need to pay close attention because this is a little bit tricky, okay? If we have compound subject joined by or or nor, the verb agrees with the subject closest to it, okay? So if we have a single subject and we have a plural subject, okay, they're both joined by or or they're joined by nor, then we will look at the closest subject to the verb. The closest subject to the verb that is the that is a subject that the verb will have to agree with. For example, if uh, here we have neither the actors, oh sorry, neither the director nor the actors. Neither the director is one person, nor the actors, several people, are. So in this case, the verb will have to agree with the closest subject, which is the actors, and the actors, plural. Now, if we reverse it, if we, if we replace the actor with the director and the director with the actors, let's see what happens to the sentence. Neither the actors nor the director is, because now the closest subject to the verb is director, single. Therefore, the verb must agree with the closest subject, which is single, the director. Okay? Now, let's take a look at job versus work. What is the difference between job and work? Okay? Let's first talk, uh, talk about job. A job generally refers to a function or a position, as in Julie went to Japan and got a job as an English teacher. About 150, about 150 jobs will be created in the new industrial zone. Emily is an event manager. She loves her job. John is out of work at the moment. He is busy applying for jobs. You will need a well-paid job if you want to live in central London because it's expensive. Now, job can also be a task or an assignment or a chore, which all mean basically the same thing. So a job could be an assignment, a chore, or a task. So uh, let's take a look. I had a hard job removing the stains. 
Charlie, it's your job to mow the lawn. Okay, what's mow the lawn? Mow the lawn is, you know, a lawn is a yard, in, in the yard, the front or the back, normally the front yard, you have grass. So mowing the lawn, it means to cut all the grass to make it same level, to make it look nice. So Charlie, it's your job to mow the lawn. Stop interrupting her. Let her get on with the job. All right, now job is a countable noun. Job is a countable noun. A person can have one job or several jobs. So, uh, you know, it, it has a plural form and it has a single form. Bob took a second job because he needed more money. A job can be a full-time job or a part-time job. What is a part-time job? It means temporary job. What is a full-time job? It means a permanent job that you go from nine to five or you do it for, uh, you know, every day. Expressions with the job, with the word job. Uh, okay, so some expressions that are associated with the word job. You did a good job. Great job. This is, uh, this is you know, this is another form of encouragement to tell someone that you approve or you like what they've done. You did a good job. You did a great job. It's a good job Tom heard the customer complaining. Here it means luckily. Luckily Tom heard him. So good job that you, you know, good job that you stumbled on this problem before it got bigger. So luckily you, you stumbled, stumbled here, just another way of saying found. So good job you found this problem before it, it got bigger. So luckily. A plum job, it means a, a well-paid job. A plum job is like a fat job, like, you know, a job with a big salary. Okay, now let's take a look at work. Work refers to, okay, uh, work could refer to a mental or physical activity, such as Emily works hard. She has a lot of work to do. John is looking forward to get back to work. Or you can say John is looking forward to get back to working again. There is a lot of work to be done uh, to the old house. There is a lot of work to be done to the old house. Now work is both a verb and an uncountable noun. Okay, there is no works. Work is work. There is no work and works because it is uncountable noun but it could be a verb so if we use work as a verb we could add s to it if it's a singular present form then he works at the supermarket works is fine but i have a lot of work you don't have a lot of works so so pay attention because i see a lot of students make that mistake bob works in the oil industry many people apply for work in his company not uh, many people apply for a work because again if it's uncountable then you cannot use uh, the a and an articles the indefinite articles with uh, with uncountable nouns and also you can't give them the plural form and countable nouns just stay as they are work on the project has not yet began begun sorry uh, it can also refer to the place where you do your job so the place where you do your job is your work. Where is dad? He's at work. He arrives at work at nine o'clock every morning. Uh, okay, just a quick uh, reminder here. We said arrive uh, here in the present simple because this is a routine. He always goes to work at nine in the morning. So we use a present simple. It is advisable not to make personal calls at work. Don't make personal calls at work. I'll buy some food in, on my way home from work. All right, so this is the difference between job and work. Now let's take a look at some expressions with the word work. Work like a charm, what does that mean? If something works like a charm, it means it works or it functions very well. To work very well or be exceptionally effective. All right, let's take a look at some examples. I cleaned it with vinegar and it worked like a charm. It means cleaning it with vinegar was very effective. 
This new software works like a charm. I barely had to do anything and the image is perfect. I read about some negotiating techniques before the big budget meeting and I have to say that they actually worked like a charm. So the, the techniques that he, that he read about or he learned worked like a charm in his, inter, in his meeting. Our little arrangement worked like a charm. She cooks, I bring home the money. The medicine worked like a charm and my life has, has greatly improved. So the medicine was very effective. Let's take a look at another expression with work, another phrase. Work your fingers to the bone. What does that mean? If you work your fingers to the bone, it means you work so hard that you actually uh, peel the skin off your fingers and the flesh until you get to the bone. That's how hard you are working, to work excessively hard. First example, I worked my fingers to the bones renovating this house, and I'm glad to say that it has all been worth it. It means, you know, I did a good job. I'm proud of what I did. True, I worked really hard, but I'm happy with the results. You have everyone working their fingers to the bone, you need to give them a break or they'll burn out. Okay, so you have everyone working extremely hard. You need to give them a break or they'll burn out. What's burn out? It means they will not be able to function or, or you know, or, or you, you know, they will be frustrated with their jobs. So you need to give them a break or some incentive to keep them motivated. What sort of life is this? If like a miner, you work your fingers to the bone. You know, miners are very hardworking people. You know, they mine for gold or coal or minerals or whatever it is. And it's extremely hard in the, in the worst working conditions because they work in, you know, underground in caves and in mines. So what kind of life is this if you work like, like a miner? You work your fingers to the bone. I have washed, cooked, fetched, and carried all my life. I worked my fingers to the bone in his house. It's not fair. I worked my fingers to the bone all day, and then I have to cook and clean in the evenings. All right. So this will uh, do it for today, guys. Don't skip the quiz, and I'll see you soon.